Greetings, citizens of YouTube, to Blog34, dated the 16th of October 2022. The prologue. Um, no, that, that's a weird introduction. Um, but um, we'll uh, talk about why I sort of like introduced a little bit like that um, a little bit later on. Um, but well, welcome to anyway to um, this blog. Um, as you know, I've uh, well, we're on the 34th one now and um, they're going along OK. And uh, as you know, these are a warts and all of what's been going on in my week, really, with um, some retro elements um, and a little bit of a catch up, really. Um, it seems sort of like the only way I get a conversation in at the moment. Um, but um, just a little bit of a catch up with my mother. Thank you very much for all the um, kind messages in the comments. Um, it's It's been interesting. Um, my mother has mostly uh, been in bed this week. I've been the person that's uh, been doing all the housework and shopping, which I do mostly anyway. It's not much of a change, um, but it has it has meant that um, it's taken my mind off of things a little bit, and that's in a good way. But it has brought upon some dwellings of my own um, in the fact that well, what's the best way to put it? Um, so I'm around, and the first thing that happens when you've got a problem, you know, health-wise, is, and that you're caring for your family, is that you'll spend your time phoning the doctor, making sure they're comfortable, cups of teas, making sure they're eating properly, all that sort of thing. And um, I then instantly looked in my mother's, uh, phone book and phone my my sister and uh, the family and they've all come round and um, spent some time with my mother and it made me think when my mother is gone nobody would be doing that for me sort of like a horrible way to open up a blog but I have to say it's warts and all and there has to be an element of truth. And I think that's what started this blog off. It's like, um, how do you turn something like this around? How If, if um, you're not at work and loneliness is getting to you a little bit and friendships become strained and phone calls don't get, don't happen anymore and all sorts of things. If I was to stop doing this blog, would somebody question it? If I wasn't texting in a Discord channel, would they just assume that person's left? Is there a person that would try to find out? Do you know what I mean? I mean, we've all heard of cases where, um, well, take it like this. Um, Sonny Liston in the past, a great, um, you know, a boxer um, of quite renown, wasn't discovered dead for four days. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll go off that subject in a moment. But I've wanted to do this warts and all to show that what might, you know, people that will pick this up after I'm gone, what I was like. But... Um, it can only show that if I address the issue in this or if people ask me questions that then re make me reminisce and that sort of thing. Um, I get jealous, I dare say, is the correct word, when I know there are friends out there and they've got something, you know, like uh, they've got a daughter or they've got a wife and a daughter or they've got friendships or they're going to work and those people would recognise uh, something's up. Um, I remember I was at work in Manchester going through a really bad time 
um, something that I won a case against because it was what they were doing was constructive dismissal. I lost two stone in weight. Um, I grew a beard. Um, I came in tired. I left tired. Um, nobody batted an eyelid. Um, that's because they're colleagues and not friends. There's a difference. And one of my regrets at the moment is that you know, I've, I, you, you lose close close friendships for whatever reasons, and they don't seem to go back to the way that they were, or no matter how much you cherish hearing a voice, that's not going to happen again, or something, you know, along those lines. Um, but anyway, we start off with the news. That's a, we, we'll dwell upon those things another time. As you know, I do the news just to date stamp this. Um, so, the war. We always bring in the war. And I do apologise if I do look down, but I write, write down and prep some of this stuff because basically after, uh, the news stuff is just a date stamp and I'm not going to memorise it. Um, and this is what I wrote down from a news article in my own writing. So it says... Authorities in the West are engaged in prudent planning to prevent chaos and panic in their home countries if Russia was to detonate a nuclear bomb in or near Ukraine. The prospect is considered highly unlikely, but plans are being considered to provide emergency support to populations fearful on nuclear escalation. So I think articles like this get written purely because nuclear is now been in the in the news sort of for the la for for months but but escalated in the last three weeks. And if the news don't report um, recent deaths or shellings or bombs or high impact news about civilians around the war, then they'll drag a story or elongate something just to bring it into the news and into our consciousness. Um, Double-edged sword on that, just like most things. Uh, my opinion is, let's end this war. That, that's, that's, that's the end for this. I've been through the 80s with war and all sorts of stuff and the nuclear element um, it seems like history is repeating itself um, I just want it to end politics and as you know all of this is nothing to do with my opinions or anything these are just articles in the news um, and I can't pronounce people's names so you have to excuse all that as well um, Kwasi Kwarteng believes that Liz Truss has brought herself a few weeks by sacking him on Friday. The wagons are circling, he said. A former minister stated as well that it's 50-50 if she should last until Christmas. Now, like I say, this government, it's, it's hang your head in shame time and all of this sort of stuff. And it's better the devil you know time. Um... I wasn't happy with Boris, but the one thing I will say about Boris in is that we did vote him in. This um, leadership campaign meant that we had no interest in it whatsoever and no input. And a person was chosen not by the people. You then got a person that obviously has made mistakes, uh, but they affect us. And you have to ask yourself, what does this statement actually mean? Are you going to have another um, head of government um, competition to see who goes in? Shouldn't there be a two strikes and you're out type thing? Because I should think if you did a poll now of confidence in the Conservative government, they'd say, get them out and put Labour in. And I'd have to turn around and say, hey, after voting someone in, getting them out, putting somebody else in, and they make it a mess of our economy, um, that should possibly be an automatic thing. Um, I don't know. I'm not a politician. 
all I know is is that when when someone comes in, they're going to make decisions that are not popular, and they're things that can't turn around in 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 weeks or months. They put plans in that take years. Um, you have to put computers in place and people in place and start the ball rolling to get something done. You know, if, if you're going to change how the unemployed are paid, you know, um, and, and you're, and you're going to do it in a different way, then you're going to be putting in a policy that then has to be written in law, that then has to have computer equipment, people trained up, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and you're looking at a year of uproar a year of settling down and then a year and then a couple of years where basically you see the fruits of that working or not um boris what was he was he in power for about two and a half years he was out because of parties and all of that sort of stuff i've got no doubts about all of that um but this person's been in for a couple of months i think they're making a hash of it um she sacked someone that's only been there for a couple of weeks and it was the chancellor and you have to look at it and go hey anybody can make a mistake but you've made too many and really nobody has now got faith in the government regardless of whether you you've got to be there for four years or not um, there's got to be a um, like a batting thing in baseball three strikes you're out type thing um, because I mean, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think anybody can actually turn around and say our brains are so short, so short in memory that we're not going to forget all of this and not, and not instantly go the other way with Labour. And I, I'm not a Labour person, so to be quite honest, um, this whole thing's a mess. But that's the end of politics. Remember, I'm, I'm not a politician. And then I just want to touch upon a couple of deaths and. It seems all of my problems actually at the moment seem to be dwelling on death at the moment. I, if you look at previous blogs, things haven't been right for me since my friend Martin died. Then we had the anniversary of my father. Then there's my mother's sickness. There's been deaths with celebrities. And now we've had two more celebrities from my childhood, Robbie Coltrane and uh, Angela Lansbury. And I just want to, you know, say that they'll never be forgotten. Um, I made a little joke about Angela Lansbury. She died on Tuesday, by the way, the 11th. She was 96. I put that rumours that Jessica Fletcher is investigating the death are just that, rumours. Um, she was in murder, she wrote. Um, but... Uh, I'm not testing out the waters or anything on this, but... Um, these are two people that were around. I remember Murder, She Wrote, of course. I remember uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. And I think she was in a company of wolves, which is, you know, we're talking about film history. And Robbie Coltrane, everybody's been talking about Cracker and Harry Potter, but I'll never forget the third series of Blackadder which was not a great series if you look at the quality of the series as a whole and Robbie Coltrane doing his dictionary um, you know a, a class act a great Scotsman um, just a fantastic actor and all I want to say to those is um, rest in peace my my great childhood heroes thank you very much for everything you did and we then come to shout outs um now it's been one of those weeks where i've had to do stuff in a rush all this week all this week has been a rush finding time to do something and trying to keep my mind off of now my mother being ill even though I've had to consciously go, no, think about that and get things done. Um, so shout outs. So I've had to get them all from all the stuff that I've brought out uh, this week. And they are uh, Jambon, uh, LFC Gamer, 
uh, Martroid, Down the Rabbit Hole, Denny, Steve's Gaming, Colin Ferguson, Milfy Swimbuckle, Colin Jones, Rocket Bunny, Main Meister, Ox, and Scott McMillan. Um, those are the ones that I pulled from all the comments up until about six o'clock last night. So if there have been more after that, I do apologize. Uh, but every single one of them has left a comment, positive or negative. And some of them have asked questions and the questions will be coming up any moment. Um, I'll do the very best I can at answering those questions. I've done a quick read through. There wasn't anything that um, would be difficult for me to answer, but I haven't read them thoroughly because I like to do some of it in the blog right now. So um, that's why I'm looking over here on the left. Oh, by the way, just before I go any further, the eagle-eyed of you will notice that things have changed here a little bit. Yes, I've been tidying up the computer that was there that is now gone. You can now see the corner of my arcade stick. Um, there is now space for me to work on the computer that's underneath the desk. You can see the PS3 actually in the corner. And good old Spidey is a bit more prominent. And the controller has moved. Because yes, I do turn the PS5 on and I do play it on occasion. It's just not very often. Um, so what was I going to do? The questions, wasn't I? Yes. So um, these are in no order. Um, and um, they are the comments that I have not answered, which is why they're in the section held for I haven't responded. So Colin Ferguson is the first one that's here. Um, he says, here is my question. Um, do you think cinemas will still be here in 10 years from now or a thing of the past? And everyone plugged into VR headsets and streaming movies straight into their heads. All the best. <laughs> um, do you know what? That's a, an interesting question and one that I tried actually to raise with a couple of friends um, months and months ago. Um, you know, whether it be in a, in a, a blog that I was... Um, invited to be on or a phone conversation with the same person or whatever in fact actually one of the regrets i've got um, was that i know somebody with the same vr headset as me and uh, we talked about watch parties i don't know if you've noticed but on streaming services you can book a film and, and do what they call a watch party and it brings up a little challenge and i believe i've never done it um, and you watch the same program and you and you chat about it while it's being broadcast at the same time. So you've got that input um, while you're watching it. Really probably good when you're watching some sort of murder mystery or you can laugh out loud at comedies or um, just imagine watching something like Naked Gun and uh, all those things that come on the screen that you might have missed and somebody will go, oh, do you see that on the floor or whatever? Um, it can take away because a film can be something that's best watched alone. Um, but I always wanted, with the friend that had the VR headset as me, I, I, I did bring it up as an, as an implied thing, um, that I'd love to watch a film in VR, in either his environment or my environment, put on a film that we both enjoy, um, and just uh, chew the fat while watching it. And it, it's it's very much like those broadcasts you see where they say, watch with, you know? Only um, it would be very personal, you know, you'd be watching it with a friend and it would be much more free for, free-forming, I think is probably the best word. But to answer the question, because that never happened, um, and it, like I say, my VR headset really is now just me sold personally or if I go into some sort of like a chat room that they've got I think they've got something called big screen loads of people that I just don't know and you're never really going to get to know and you don't know their age it's all that same chat engine rubbish because you've got avatars and stuff but to answer the question about films um, 
the film industry has been in disarray virtually since its inception. There's been wars, there's been, you know, all sorts of stuff that's interrupted. And COVID has been a big turning point for it. And if it weren't for certain films, um, you know, and I mentioned like Bond and Spider-Man and a few others that actually have raised people wanting to go back to the cinema. Um, I, I would say that cinema would be not around shortly because as you know, we've all now got our big screens. We've now all got our um, HDR players. Um, so at the end of the day, what do you need the cinema for? But the cinema has always been, a, I want to get out the house, take my girlfriend, take my friend, or solely go to and see a film in your own quiet way um, and be entertained. And like the theatre, you, you do that by coming out of the environment that you're in. We talk about it with games an awful lot. You know, when we look at our past, I remember um, people have said to me, I didn't watch TV when I was a kid. I was riding my bike, I was running, I was playing cricket, I was all that sort of stuff. And most of our kids these days are on our phones and on our tablets. And uh, greater minds than mine, which are, and I'm talking about my friends here, have deliberated that. And I look at it like this. Um, I think the cinema will always be here. It's just it will adapt and change. Um, I do think VR will become heavier in this retrospect. I do believe tellies and Blu-ray players will continue to move forward. Um, internet streams will become faster and faster as just like processor chips go faster and faster. And um, we will just have more options on what to watch. I, I don't think it'll be 10 years, um, 20, possibly. Um, COVID, like I say, I think has been a very damaging element. And I'm not quite sure how long it was before the cinema bounced back from the war. I know that people still went to see films during the war, but I think that we then had a period of no money. Um, and like I say, if it weren't for the fact that then suddenly there were colour films and sound and all sorts of stuff, stuff that excited us again to go back, it could have ended just there. So hopefully that's answered your question. I think it will take 20 years, not 10. And I do think that our options will grow to the point where cinema won't be what it is now, what we remember it as now. Okay, so good one. Thanks very much, Colin. Uh, Milfi, you good old Milfi. And as you know, I apologise to him. He's done another riddle for me, and I'm going to read it out verbatim. And I got the first word right, Milfi, but didn't get the word. So, this is his uh, riddle. Like a professional spy, I mark your every step. Clinging to your every move. Then, like some scheming, murderous stalker, I cover up the evidence, no doubt sending a cold tingle down your spine as I go about my business. Very wordy, very lovely. It puts images straight in your mind. And of course, I did what I normally do, deliberate as I go. So like a professional spy, I mark you every step. Step being the the word that comes up there. Remember, I always look at the last word clinging to your every move and I was going, oh, was this mud? Mm. Uh, then like some scheming murderous stalker, I cover up the evidence. Well, mud doesn't get covered. It stays there and that's how we've caught many criminals with footprints and stuff. Water can wash it away, but we're talking about one word. So, you know, obviously, I've done a lot of walking in the snow and I went, oh, well, that gets washed away with more snow that falls. No doubt sending a cold tingle down your spine. Cold snow? Oh, I think I've got this now. And what am I? And I thought it was, like I say, just snow. 
But then he gave me a cryptic, well, not a, a code, right? And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters and a key to that code. So I went, well, it can't be snow because snow's, you know, four letters. The answer, by the way, if you haven't guessed it already, was snowfall. Um, so I was very, very close. But I, I, I list that as, no, nope, it's a fail. You didn't get the word. Um, thank you very much, Milfi. I love these. They're great. I don't think you can keep them up. <laughs> but um, it just shows your inventive mind. And that's all I've got to say about that. Um, so thank you very much. And then we got Denny. Um, great Denny. He's got his own channel. He does lots of stuff with... Uh, Vic 20 uh, adventures as well and uh, has his own discord um, um, he gave me a lovely long list comment wishing me well talking about employment his history all sorts of stuff and he brought back something that I had to reminisce a little bit about in fact actually in the recent past, because he's got a question to you, Dell. What did you think of the latest Godzilla vs. King Kong film? And it's interesting because I actually bought that as a film for a friend. Um, and it was to spark a discussion, but it also was done because it was a special occasion at Christmas. Um, the person had got a new piece of hardware. It would demonstrate that hardware. And I thought at the time it was probably one of the best pictures around when it comes to sound and vision. But when it comes to the film, I thought, well, I don't know this person's likes and dislikes. But it's a popcorn film. It's an entertaining film. I don't think you could be disgusted by it unless you really, really hated monster flicks. So, what did I think of it? Well, it's exactly that. It's a popcorn flick. Um, I didn't think it was too bad at all. When you consider that there have been this type of film done in the past, and they've been very hit and miss, this one was more a flatline of mostly good. Um, entertain. Um, ended a bit just like they all do, like a stalemate. Um... But, oh my God, um, I look at that picture and I just go, yeah, that was, that picture was nice. And there's lots of weird things going on, like the ground is upside down and all sorts of stuff. They, um, a lot of the, the beginning was on a ship um, in the rain, but it showed off a lot of effects that my, that the camera had to then turn into HD, and the, when the colours are vivid like that later on, it's absolutely fantastic. Or neons and all sorts of stuff. And the only downside of it was is that on the fighting sequences, like many fighting sequences, are quite fast. They they go so quickly that you don't get the enjoyment of a slow motion type thing. But it wasn't that bad. Um, I'm going to turn around and say it's a solid seven. Um, as in, it's, it's, it's above average and nowhere near the top. Um, and I hope that gives that a, a, a good answer to you, Denny. Thank you so much as well for the lovely caring words and comment that you left. Then we've got Jambon. Um, now, I had to write some things down because I've done this answer in a blog before. Um, he, he's left some lovely things about uh, as well comments to me um, and his answer to last week uh, but his question this week is the original Blair Witch Project is a film that tends to divide people what was your verdict on it and do you have a favourite found footage horror film take care mate and all the best thank you so much um, so I did answer something like this before but it actually was more about mini stories Okay, and they, they turn into those urban legends. And that was what the section was called, I think, urban legends. And a lot of these films turn up as ur uh, uh, urban legends because that's what Blair Witch Project was. It was found footage, i.e. some camera was found 
events occurred so it wasn't like a it was almost looked like a mini documentary um, and it was about an urge uh, an urban legend that went on in this um, sort of woodlands area um, so from that point of view have there been other found footage films that I've liked I'll mention a couple VHS V slash H slash S and there's a range of those films, but the very first one was, I found, to be pretty good in the found footage category. As was um, Lake Mungo. Um, these are all films that have been done just recently, really, you know, last 15 years. Um, as was the one that was, I think, in the consciousness um, and was bigged up, which was Cloverfield, which... I was disappointed with, but from a found footage point of view, it was well done. Um, so those ones stick out, as does a film called As Above, So Below. And the reason I like that one is, is they actually filmed it in the actual area of where the setting was. So it was underground, you know, in a cavish type um, situation. That one probably stands proud um, for me if you want to go back to monster films um, and you want to watch a found footage film troll hunter comes to mind so i hope that answers that jam bomb and um, thank you so much all the time and it's appreciated by the way to all of you for leaving comments and questions um, we then get to rocket bunny okay again lovely lovely long comment um can't say any more that they I love reading them all and they touch me when they talk about my mother and all sorts of stuff and I try to read them out to my mum but she doesn't understand um, so he's put my question for you for next week after you showed us a couple of box set games which are your top three favorite boxed collectors games in your collection uh, and if you read this Fred here's mine and he gave a couple and one of those is in is in my top three um it's very difficult to give a top three because a lot of them are covered still in the boxes in the attic and that's because i don't live in my own house i live in my mother's and she doesn't really want to pick uh, a statue of a dragon <coughs> so if you haven't guessed already the big boxed version of um of um sorry um skirum that's right skirum um, is something that I bought from Game as they were going under. Um, I don't know if you remember, but Game suffered drastically, just like HMV, and went under. They sold absolutely everything off and then were bought at the last minute. But they were selling all their stock, and I bought the Skirum Dragon big box game, and it's huge, this box, um, for £50. It was 49 99 and I bought it at the same time as I bought the um, Halo box set, which had the Marine statue. And I remember it was a very costly month because it was done towards Christmas. So this is where game was starting to sell so much that they could pay off their, their um, suppliers. <coughs> and I bought my friend Kelly the same thing. Um, and it had those codes as well that if you bought this box set, you had an extra clothing or whatever it was in the game so Skirum is definitely there the another one is guild wars 2 because i was a tester for guild wars 2 i i had the option of buying the big box statue which had a picture of which had a sorry a, a statue of one of the main characters in it um a sort of cat-like beast and the box had all the signatures of everybody that um uh, that wrote code in that game artists as well as musicians and um, that stands proud um, but in the attic unfortunately <coughs> but if you think back at those collections do you remember um, do you remember Rocket that they, they had a halo helmet that everybody wanted in fact the price of this thing went up astronomically it was just a helmet with a gun clip or something like that and everybody was looking for it. I never actually got that. Um, but I don't think I'd actually include that in my best 
box sets and so forth. I, I prefer the statue type thing or the collection of items that gives it as, as a whole. So I'm going to just mention those two um, because everything else then amalgamates into one, which is the collection bits, the bits that give you an art book, a soundtrack, dice, a coin that I've shown before in my previous box sets. And I think, you know, therefore, some of those Guild Wars ones where they didn't include a statue, they just had those coins and dice or Ultima series and so forth like that, um, bring back great memories for me. And um, they aid so much when you've got things like a cloth map and things like that. You don't need a big statue, bulky statue or anything like that. So Colin Jones, lovely Colin Jones. You know, I've mentioned him before. Um... Loves to do things in bullet points. <laughs> and he even put, thanks for mentioning that. I'm doing it again. This is how our conversations are. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I can read his stuff all the time. And it's the same in Discord. He, um, he makes me laugh. Um, I'm just as technically minded as you, Colin. Just bear that in mind. All right, I did service desk work for 25 years. Just remember that. Neither here nor there. It's getting hard to think of relevant questions, he says. Um, but a lot of vintage stuff these days is really expensive and or difficult to keep running. If money, space and maintenance weren't issues, what system or su systems from the past that you don't currently have would you really like to own? And I've answered it. Because I've already said that if, if money was no object, if I could have one device that I always wanted to have, it was the X68000. And it will always be the X68000. In fact, I hate it when people do comparisons of games and they show all the different home versions of it. And the X68000 is in there because that one's going to be the one. Because it was so powerful and they actually wrote and designed and developed games on that system to go into the arcades. That's how good that machine was. A boring answer for you, Colin, but one that um, was answered previously. Go back to my blogs, young man, um, because you should know that. Um, I don't have another one if money was no object because I tend to find that if you're buying modern, it's still expensive now. But I could save up and get it. I could get a loan. I could I could do what I, what I need. When it comes to old stuff, I've had so many machines. Remember, I was very, very early stages. In the days when I had a VIC-20, I was actually repairing um, some computers. They gave me broken computers um, that had cracked cases that were brought in as a part exchange. And therefore... Um, I worked on machines that I'd never ever even consider owning. Oryx, you know, comes to mind. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've been blessed a little bit. So, I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. By, by the way, guys, you know, I, I, I keep saying it, but um, I do love all of this. It's brilliant. Um, and then I think the last one is Steve. Good old Steve. Um, he, I mentioned last week that he had his uh, 100 subs and I was going like this and how many of these, right? Uh, he's had, what, 14 more? So let's see, 14, so that's 4, 8, 12, 14, yeah. I think he has actually 15, so 15. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> he's a great great friend who, who who entertains me um feel very close to steve even though we've never met um two questions from him have you ever tried your hand at game programming and if so how did it go and what software if any did you use i've tried programming through the years starting off with basic i've mentioned before where um we used to have magazines and you know how they were badly printed. They were either photocopied and then photographed and all sorts of stuff. And they never differentiated between a, a zero and an O very well. Um, you know, every no, even now we know that the zero has got a line through it. Um, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, 
and I managed to get certain programs to work myself without having to wait for the following month where the fixes would be in place. But I was never good at trying to write it myself. Um, I know about go to, go sub, you know, um, if then else, you know, all that sort of stuff doesn't make me a coder. It's like learning a language. I was never, I, I, I took up um, German and Spanish when I was at school, dropped the Spanish, kept the German as even in my third year of careers. Don't know why I kept it. And basically got a, a, a grade D, right? Which is terrible. I mean, why keep that? Unless I'm, don't even, I didn't even imagine going to Germany. You know what I mean? It was, don't know, just one of them things where I just went, well, I quite enjoy it. But there was nothing for me career-wise. I wasn't even thinking about leaving. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so have I tried other languages? I've tried fourth. Um, and of, of course, the big one when I went to night school was C, Borland C. C++, actually. And that's where I learned about libraries. C is a structured language, but it, um, um, it, it uses libraries. So depending on what libraries you use, it, it has a group of commands in there. So you chose the libraries at the beginning and then you structured your code. Um, I just wasn't particularly good at it. And machine code, forget it. You know, I mean, basically, I compiled my C code into machine code. That's what you generally do, compile. Um, so hopefully that answers your question on that one. I'm just no good at languages. <clears throat> so I've tried, and at least I can turn around and put my hand on my heart and go, I've at least tried it, you know, and many times. Number two. Can you pick any 8 or 16-bit game to be remade, updated for the modern consoles? What game do you think do you pick and why? Take care, mate. And love to your mum. Thank you so much. I did pass that on to my mum. She went, Steve who? Um, <laughs> I then explained who you were. Don't worry. Um, and as you know, I've, I've told you, um, although I've been, I did a series of stuff where I said... Uh, Games that we played in the past that have been given a lick of pain. And I said that and so many times. It comes off my tongue as fast as that now. Um, I don't particularly like them. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them go in too much of a direction. I had to think, though, because I wanted to give an answer because your ones are becoming harder to answer and I don't think I give a good enough answer. So I chose one. Not necessarily is it one that I'm happy about, but if I could see a game done again or expanded upon, I think it would be Supremacy. Now, Supremacy is a C64 game that I didn't even see on the C64 because I had an Amiga. But it was one of those games like Sins of the Solar Empire, 4x4 type games, and it was about planetary conquering and the computer was doing exactly the same thing. And it had its 30th anniversary and it was rewritten for the Commodore 64 and done incredibly well. It should have a sequel. Um, and although you could say elements of it are all, all in those games I've just mentioned, it hasn't had it, I don't think, its own sequel. What would I like to see, therefore, done? Supremacy. And done well. And I would instantly go out and get it. So I'm glad I gave an answer to it. Not a good one. I'm sure that you've got hundreds that you could choose. All of the, you know, um, shooters and platforms and everything that, you, that, are, that are out there. Thousands and thousands of games. I'm sure there's one that could be much better than the choice I've made. And that ends the questions. And we're moving on now into more my area. So, you can switch off now, I suppose, if, if you're not interested in me. Um, but what have I watched on YouTube? So, these are outside of my friends in Discord. 
Um, this week in retro talked about the Hobbit adventure turning 40 and I've got a little bit of a topic of that at the end. It's interesting but this week in retro I think what's best about this week in retro is the things that are actually going on that people have done like um, sound cards that they've tried to recreate, more stuff going on with FPGA um, somebody taking the balls to rewrite something or take something to a third release or a fourth release or whatever um, an operating system on a computer that never had one that sort of stuff that's what I like uh, this week in retro for the Hobbit celebrating 40 years I'll touch upon in a, in a little bit uh, and then RMC was doing um, something on saving his Amiga hard drives now it's weird about saving Amiga hard drives because we now know that there are many ways that we can do this with SD cards on modern hardware and uh, we're under emulation it's not even a thing. Um, but I moved from an A1000 to an A2000 and my last one was an A3000. And so hard drives became a thing because those machines were more business orientated and so they really well you bought them without a hard drive but you could buy them configured with a hard drive and um, and therefore hard drives were things that were already in there my a1000 was the first machine that had a sidecar but the sidecar was geared towards ibm compatibility more in a ram expansion which it it really needed because unlike an A500 it had no trapdoor and the front memory expansion was really um, something that actually came with my machine but actually the first couple of models that were, came out the door didn't have the 256 expansions it didn't even have 512k in memory um, mine faithfully did um, so I never had sidecars for an A600, an A1200, um, and that's because I had the bigger models that were geared to those anyway. Uh, but it's an interesting watch, and it's very difficult these days to find. If, if when you think about, we do everything in gigs now and terabytes, a 20 meg hard drive, <laughs> and how much it cost. Um, as we all know about Main Meister, he'll tell you a lovely story about how did we know that we could put uh, on a on a memory stick no bigger than my thumbnail all this stuff. And uh, as I, you know, I'm a big uh, fan of bigging up other people's channels. You've got over two thousand odd videos to get through with Main Meister. What are you doing here? Go and watch one of his. Um, done with much better production values probably done with much more inventiveness than this um, but do watch the RMC that was great 8 bit guy now this was very interesting because he's been working on a board called the Commander X16 and he's now gone to production and he wanted to show it off as a demo it's still not fully there yet he's, he's going on board but it, what was interesting and, and, and Panther came to mind on, on this Believe it or not, and I don't think too much about uh, Panther that that much. Uh, but you know, he's still a mate, and um, I looked at it and went, "You've got two ch chips in this. You've got a, an FPGA chip, and you've got a, a YM sound chip, and the FPGA can emulate. I think he said twenty six SID chips. My God." Um, if you can imagine that you'd never ever be able to emulate a SID chip because it's it's inherent way that it was manufactured means it's got defects and you can't manufacture a defect <laughs> right um, but can you imagine 26 SID chips Panther um, combined with this YM chip and doing all of your magic work which you do do you know, you know, I'm very proud and big of the stuff that you've done with your SID chip. Um, and I'm just uh, urging people to look at that video if you want to, just because 
it's not a Commodore 64. It's not trying to be a Commodore 64. It's a machine that possibly could have been the next evolution, even though there was one called the Mega 65. He never mentions that, I don't think, in the video. Um, then there's one that I just want to comment on because it touched me an awful lot. The New York Comic Con had a, had a reunion of Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. And how strong do you have to be um, Michael J. Fox at this moment? To see him as he was didn't phase me in any way. I didn't come away feeling sorry for him. But I was reading the comments afterwards and they weren't totally kind. But there were a lot that turned around and bigged him up and said, you know, quite rightly, wow. Well done for you to get up there on that stage, to big up trying to do everything that you can to get rid of this horrible disease that you've got and to still not worry about your public image and go up there because you want to celebrate something that you're remembered for, in this case, Back to the Future. So I just want to comment on that because that is, our, the, that is a hero, in my, my opinion. <clears throat> And then just another one that I just just recently started watching. Scribbles to Screen, um, mainly a Doctor Who channel, but he was talking about lost BBC shows. Why they were lost, why we got them back, all of that sort of stuff. And it's interesting because if you're not a Doctor Who fan, you probably aren't aware of this. But if you are a Doctor Who fan, you're well aware of it. And that is, we sold a lot of our, of our early shows to other countries. <coughs> Every one of them had a contract to send it back. Many of them didn't. Um, and shows that were in black and white when colour came around ended up as being junk. And therefore, they junked them. You couldn't uh, overwrite them like videotape. Although there are methods. But back then, they weren't known. Um, an interesting part. So, what I've ever watching of you guys, that's just the stuff outside of... Um, my friend. So, Robert's Gaming, I continue to watch. He's done his Minecraft and uh, other videos. The interesting thing about Robert was, and this was just dumb luck, is that both Steve and Robert, they, they, they bring out a lot of content. And um, I've been doing my gaming series that I've just started. And two of those gaming ones that I've actually prepped for, did a day's work on, uh, were Gyrus and Pac-Man. And uh, Sod's Law, the first one was Gyrus, and it was done uh, by someone else. And I went, okay, that doesn't matter. I haven't wasted my time. I'll just put that to one side. Sod's Law, that I prepped the whole of Monday to do Pac-Man. And what comes out Tuesday? Pac-Man by Ron Roberts. <laughs> so it's a good job that my editing is getting quicker because I turned it around and took that Gyrus one that I did the week before and turned that one around. <laughs> And uh, I dare say the next one would be Pac-Man. I don't know yet. Um, and I'll tell you the reason why it might not be Pac-Man. A, I've just mentioned it, so there's no big surprise. B, um, this year is the 60th anniversary of Spider-Man. And Spider-Man had a video game in 1991. But it's a huge jump forward. Don't know. Um, it'll probably be Pac-Man. Um, Steve's Gaming, what's he done? Uh, more likes and dislike stuff but the most interesting one was the year of 1977 and it brought to mind my own gaming series so um he did a great video and it's more about before space invaders so and i think we've got to remember that we are of a certain age uh, steve's a little bit older than me but people around me are generally about my age just over their 50s and when we went to on holiday, we'd go to places like Barry Island, uh, Prestatin, um, you know, Porthcawl, you know, all sorts of different places, you know, Blackpool, you know, South End, all sorts of stuff. Um, they had mechanical ones, you know, those tipping point game show, you know, the coins with the two Ps that you knock off. They've been around for donkeys. He did um, some of the early arcade games, and of course, one that I fondly remember, which was a little bit later than 77, 78, was the Jaws one, um, where 
you uh, you, you shot at Jaws and it and it sort of like did a sort of like thrashing about death sequence that I'll never forget. Um, again, a mechanical um, video game, really of a sort done on film um, and sensors. But um, he talked about um, a number of these mechanical. Um, games, but the one he didn't mention was the one that I used to go on that, that my mother allowed me to do. You had a huge round circle of coin inputs, okay? And they were all coloured yellow, blue, red, green, etc. And you had these jockeys on sticks. So you had a metal jockey on a stick, and all it had to do was go from the beginning to the end, right? You put the coin on the colour that you wanted and you see this jockey go bopping up and down and it would stop and stutter and then go like this. And the one that won at the end, it flashed the bulb yellow. If you put your 2p in yellow, you got you got a you won a prize. <clears throat> the amount of times that I went to on holiday in Wales and we went on those machines, because I wasn't interested in the 2p. 5p stuff because you had to put the coin at the top and I was only like 7 and 8 years old the, at least the, the jockey one you had chairs or you could actually ask for one you know the, a box that you could stand on or something while well, my mother or father would put the coin in for me if I couldn't reach great memories um, ok Ponder so he's done his uh, May, May Meister Arcade challenge I watched that I do watch a number of those, Ponder, but because um, I, I, I'm, I'm not interacting with those too much. I just like to watch and see what the game's about and see how far you get. Um, but I get great enjoyment watching them because they're usually of games I haven't even seen. So keep doing those. That's great. And uh, I wrote 20th Century Gaming down, but then I remembered that was last Saturday and I mentioned it in the last blog. So he didn't do anything, I don't think, this week. And then we come to what I've watched on TV. Okay, so um, House of the Dragon, which I've mentioned lots of times before. Um, and we're up to episode nine tomorrow. But if you're going to stay up late, we're, you can see it at two o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't do that. Um, but what am I thinking about it now? This now has me gripped. It is almost like revisiting Game of Thrones again in those very first five seasons, right? Um, and it's so much better than Lord of the Rings. And I don't want to belittle Lord of the Rings. It's just that this one is how it should be done, if you see what I mean. Um, I watched last night uh, Women Boxing. Now... I love boxing, as I mentioned before, and I was thinking about my father for some reason yesterday, probably because I was dwelling on my mother. And uh, I thought to myself, what would we be watching now? And I know he'd have the sports channels on or something. And I was going through the channels and I found out that there was a women's card boxing that was on last night where it was all women boxing. And there was about three or four matches. And there was one, Shields versus Marshall. These, these two were one from America, one from our own country. Um... Both had 12 rounds wins, uh, sorry, 12 fights, all wins, two by knockout, um, and no losses. Um, so it was bigged up, and I watched it, and oh my God, this took me back to the sort of like Ben and Eubank fights, you know, the Watson-Ben uh, fight, which sadly ended badly. But so as a bad example, I do apologise on that one. Um, I don't want to offend anybody, but that one was a. I just wanted to make out that it was a hammer. It was a real hammer time, and kudos to both of them. Um, I'm not going to give away who won. Um, all I will say is these didn't stop at all through the whole of the whole of the the boxing. And um, I urge you, to, if you like boxing. Do watch a replay of that. I mean, I have not seen boxing like that for a long time. Um, so that was great. And then there was a documentary on called Who Killed the KLF? And if you don't know who the KLF are, musical band. I wasn't a big KLF fan, but because they did samples. 
and I liked electronic stuff. It was easy for me to listen to some of their stuff. They were terribly in the news um, again with lawyers because of the sampling that was going on. Um, it was an interesting documentary. Things I, I discovered about it is the way that they ended. That was the thing that the documentary is, is on about. So what happened? In 1992, they deleted their whole back catalogue. Okay. Every single tune they had, every CD pulled, every record pulled. You couldn't get it on streaming services. Gone. Banished forever. At the Brit Awards, they did a coup. And what I mean by coup is they did a, a set and then they destroyed the set at the end by doing two things. One, they fired blank rounds into the crowd and then stormed off the stage. At the after parties, they tied a message round a dead sheep, threw it into the party, into the into one of the parties, and it had a message, I died for you, written on it. And then afterwards, after deleting their back catalogue, which was straight after the Brits, they wrote a vow of silence on a car and pushed it off a cliff. And they haven't discussed it since. And that's what this documentary was about. It was an interesting documentary. Um, they mentioned that some of the, the, that coup and all that sort of stuff sticks in people's minds because it's one of the biggest events that's happened on stage, you know, bigger than Pulp and the coming on and interrupting Michael Jackson and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> um, so that's one that I would definitely watch. And then at the beginning, I mentioned all of that salute and all that sort of stuff. If you haven't guessed already, I've been watching up Pompeii with Frankie Howard. Um, and I've been great getting great enjoyment out of that. Um, and then I've been watching some others. In, in Sickness and in Health is repeated on Legend, but I've been watching my DVDs because they are cut to shreds. But they will do because Alfgaard, it's a bigot. Even though you put a disclaimer on that says uses a language set in their time, they still cut, they cut them to shreds. And it's the same with another one that my nan used to watch called Nearest and Dearest, which was about a pickling factory by with Nelly Pledge and Eli Pledge, I think, were their names. Um, and they had a pickling factory. And it was... That show was all about slogans. So they would... They would abuse each other, basically, with language, you know, like calling each other a knock knee knock a doll granny or your big flea's armpit and all that sort of stuff. Um, fun, um, but of its time. Um, but up Pompeii stuck out for me this week. And um, to the point where I remembered something about it that um, I'd forgotten about, which was the odes. There was always... Um, a character on it called um, Nauseous. That's it. Because it's all set in Rome. So you had, um, I think it was Maximus Sextus, Ammonia, Nauseous, and uh, forgotten what the girl was called. Sorry. Um, and I only watched them this week. Um, but Nauseous was. Um, always fell in love with somebody and he'd write an ode because he was a bit backward at coming forward and he wanted to write an ode which is a poem that rhymes basically and um, he wrote one to a, a girl called Flavia and it read like this so it goes um, I saw her standing there the skin without a ripple and then Frankie Howard would go yeah, yeah wait for it but most of all, I love to roam around her ample. And then Nauseous would come and say, I couldn't think of a word there to rhyme. And Frankie would always have a quip or turn around and say, um, yeah, you're about the only one who doesn't. Um, all mentioned in a way that, that's fun, not degrading, but of a time. You couldn't get away with it now, but that makes me laugh, you know. Find a word that rhymes with ripple. I think uh, the word that he put in there was, I like to roam around an ample estate. Um, 
wrong word is all I've got to say about that. To answer the question for last week, by the way, just before I, because I will forget, um, it was a question. Um, well, it was actually a line from a film. And I think I've got the line written down not too far away. Yes. I wanted to know the actor in the film, and the line was, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone um, drops to zero. If you didn't Google it, that's okay. Um, but it was Edward Norton, and it was Fight Club. Because in that film, he narrates an awful lot, and that was one of the lines in it. Um, I'll do a question at the end. Um, just want to talk a little bit about what I brought out this week. So, yes, I did a random gameplay video of Vampire Survivors. I thought everybody was getting into this act. <laughs> so, being as I did a stream on it, I thought... I'll follow it up with this is how far I've got. Thanks very and, and a thank you to Steve for helping me get past the initial stages. And I showed him that video how I now play that game. It's not really a this is how you do it video, but it was more to say I love this game and this is the sort of thinking behind the game that's what i wanted to do and then the day del boy gaming history number three was gyrus and that was that brought back a lot of memories and i really enjoyed doing the editing on that one and thinking back especially about careers career advisors and uh some of the things like uh, breakfast tv brought back a lot of memories um but of course um because i was listening to music called yellow when i was doing the the actual gameplay bit, I said, but Barks to Carter and Few, um, it's the classical version, but also um, it could be mapped or looked at upon as being the version by Yellow. It's yes, isn't it? Of course it is. It's yes. Um, not Yellow. Um, and then I did an unaired stream just to close off. Now, I did a, a Minecraft server, which a, a number of people got on, but I had to switch it off uh, because the end of the month, uh, came along and it was too costly to keep it up and not enough people went on to it. So I did a rest in peace server <laughs> little video just to show off this is bits of what I did. Um, the world is saved. You can foot, you can upload that world. I can give that world to anybody else if they want it. They can play on it as much as they want. And please pick up the baton and let's do something similar. Um, I would have liked to have done a Valheim server, to be quite honest. Valheim I spent far more time on recently than I have Minecraft. Um, Valheim is more my type of game. But not everybody's got Valheim, so that's why I chose Minecraft, because Robert and a few others were starting to do Minecraft videos. I thought it was apt to do that. So that's what I did. Um, I usually do some topics, but we're running out of time. I want to just talk about that little thing that I talked about, The Hobbit, which was its 40th anniversary. With these celebrations, I don't know whether they're being overexposed a little bit. Um, I wanted to know what your thoughts were, really. Um, so we've had a, this year a Spectrum's 40th, a Commodore 64's 40th. I mentioned that in that, uh, that retro week, The Hobbit has turned 40. Last week, Mortal Kombat turned 30. It's just that you could, if you if you think about the games that came out in 1982, maybe there were 25. Why isn't there then, therefore, 40th anniversaries for Lunar Land? You know, like a Radar Rat Race, uh, Tooth Invaders, you know, all of that sort of stuff. What makes it iconic for it to have a, for, a 40th celebration for you to mention it? Um, are we going too far with this? The Hobbit, to me was a great piece of programming, a great adventure. But I remember more it, when I talk about The Hobbit, the packaging than the game. Um, it's a brilliant game, but does it deserve a section for 10 minutes celebrating its 40th anniversary? Um, am I, are we suddenly going to find Annie Rogg's Crazy Kong have a 40th celebration? Um, there is a stopping point. I, I understand it with things like Manic Miner. Um, Manic Miner was quintessentially iconic. 
Um, to me, it's iconic as uh, the camel in Revenge of the Mutant Camels. Um, but what I'm trying to get at here is you can't have every game have a celebration. Otherwise, in 1983, you're never going to... I mean, you're going to get uh, several games a week celebrating their 40th anniversary in 2023. So that's just an interesting thing that I brought up. And then I'm sick already of Christmas, <clears throat> just to mention it. Or It's too early to talk about it. All the stores have got their tubs and sweets out. And this week I had a text from my line manager saying, did I want to be part of Secret Santa? Um, and think about going to um, a Christmas do, which would be in London which I'd have to pay for to go down myself. So, of course, I, Secret Santa is one of those things that's hard for me because I'm a very giving person. But the thing I don't like about Secret Santa is, is you pull a name out of a hat. It's a person that you don't really know and you then buy them a present. The good about that is it could be a person that's always alone at Christmas and so they've got an extra present to open. The bad side of it is this person doesn't know you for toffee and they're going to send you a sock or something or... Um, some straws made out of metal or something because you've, you're set to five pounds. And it's supposed to be a fun thing, but at the end of the day, I'd rather put the money towards people that I've respected this year and want to truly show my gratitude by buying something where I know them, I thought about it, I've made the effort to look for something special, buy it and send it and give it to them whether it be by post or whatever so that's my thoughts on secret santa to be quite honest and we've just got time to do the things that arrived this week so argo steelbook um let me just uh, get rid of something that's in the way argo steelbook one film that i sort of like haven't really watched much on it's i'm starting to get more into these real life events this is an iran uh, conflict thing isn't it i think um so i'm looking forward to that steel book of the ring um it's one of those films that i like the the japanese jaw version more than the americanized version um but this one wasn't too bad um and I like the, the, the steel book and it looked like a tape. So that's the reason I bought that. Who knew? And we were talking about this topic just now. It's the anniversary of Bram Stoker's Dracula. If you have a look, it says it's the 30th anniversary. Not celebrated that much. I didn't think of it as too badly. Um, very stylized. Nothing like the book, really. Um, but, you know... What could I say? Francis Ford Coppola. Um, and I like a lot of his stuff. And then because, you know, I'm a Marvel fan for Love and Thunder, is, it, is, what, it, is what it's called, came out um, probably the worst of the four films. No, the second one is probably still worse. Um, a fun film. It's Marvel. It came in a nice case. Um, Steel Book again. So that gets that out of the way. Nothing really interesting there. Um, a lot more coming again this week. Big box games. Oh my God, did I hit the jackpot? I found a box upstairs. I was going through it. Um, these are mostly bought when game was going under. But we've got Medieval 2 Total War in a box this size. You can have a look and see what was included in it. Look. It's got the making of, a manual, art cards, a big planning map, all sorts of stuff. Um, and I opened it because you can see I played it. Yay, bloody hell, a game. He, he opened and played. I was collecting steel books, it would seem, a lot bloody earlier than I thought. Because here it is, my Unreal Tournament PC DVD in a steel book. In a sort of a case, you know, it's a cellophane case. I'm not going to try taking it up because the, the case is a bit plasticky and brittle. But um, who knew? Um, but there we are, 18 certificate. Yeah, there's that Mary Whitehouse thing again. Um, certification on games. Um, but there we go. So there's that. 
Now here's one that's really shiny. Sacred 2 Collector's Edition. Look at how shiny that is. Um, interesting, this one. I think I remember why I bought it. I would like the first one. Don't get me wrong. And I'm trying to keep that so that I can you can freeze frame it. Um, but if you look at the bottom, it says DVD. Um, DVD containing Elite Graphics Upgrade for Ultimate PC Gaming Systems Only. They actually specified if your PC is not of a very, 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 very high standard, don't even try putting these textures on. <laughs> and that instantly went, right, I've just bought my new rig. Guess what I'm going to be doing? So, put it on. Really wasn't worth the effort. They didn't really add too much to it. But Sacred 2 was a pretty good role-playing game, and I had some fun with that. And then I found my Half-Life 2 Collector's Edition tin. My God, I've forgotten about this. You can see it comes with, if I can put on there, Counter-Strike Source, Half-Life Source, free limited edition T-shirt, Half-Life 2 promo book. And uh, I'm interested now. I'm going to open this up. Oh, yeah, there's the case. There's the official hint book, the receipts in there. And oh my God, yeah, I've got the T-shirt, but it don't fit. Um, yes, so that was interesting um, to me anyway, um, that I found my... Half-Life 2 Collector's Edition, because this would have been around the time that Steam started. That's the end. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope it's been entertaining. It's ran on a little bit too long. I thought there would be next to nothing for me to talk about. Um, please love and respect each other. Um, life's too short. Um, if you can help someone, do. Um, this week, by the way, I read the readings of the electric meter of a uh, pensioner down the road who's 86 that my mother told me about. Knocked on the door, did the reading for her. She gave me the telephone number of her family and uh, uh, on a mobile, and I texted it to them. Um, that's the sort of thing that I try and do. Um, just life's too short. And hopefully you'll watch the next one, and I haven't bored you to tears. Uh but uh, just to uh, end this then in the same way that I opened it, salute. Till next time. Bye-bye.